What's up, contrarians? You see baby Grogu? <laughs> I actually didn't buy that. Um, a cousin bought that for me who seemed to forget how old I actually am, but it's cool. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's a new week, so um, I was staying positive towards the end of last week and held a great interview with with Marie from Glam Lux. If you haven't checked that out, I'll leave it uh, above, okay? But um, back into the red pill stuff, because still got a lot of stuff to talk about with that. And this video is actually going to be explicitly about that, my red pill moment. So um, like I was telling Marie in that interview, if you guys haven't checked it out, I know it's a long, long interview. It's going. I am going to break it up into smaller segments for people to watch because I don't have an attention span for long stuff. So I know you guys don't either. If you do, well, thank you. <laughs> but um, in any case, you know, she had made the case that I seem bitter, which is actually far from the case because as I've said in past videos, I really don't have any sour experiences dating black women. Uh, for me, it was just the case that I was no longer attracted to them. Not that I hate them or anything like that, um, but I see them more just as sisters or aunts. Like, I don't see them as people I want to have sex with or get into a relationship with anymore. At least not since uh, entering grad school many, many moons ago. <laughs> but in any case, my red pill moment, at least the one that I can most clearly identify because I had a lot of moments, <laughs> so to speak, um, in my past. But this one, I guess, kind of stood out, which was with my family. So for me, my red pill moment is with black family, toxic black families. And I've talked about it before. So when I was finishing college, uh, my sister came out of high school and my mother and her then boyfriend were telling me that I should speak with her about going on to college and uh, my mother was going to pay for it, presumably. And, you know, so I said, sure. So I talked to my sister about it and she had just dropped out of high school and she was like, well, I don't want to go to college. She's like, obviously, I don't like school. That's why I left high school. So I'm not trying to go to college. And I was like, well, yeah, that's cool. I mean, you know, they just wanted me to ask you about it because, you know, mom said she would pay for it or, you know, whatever. If, if you plan on going, she's like, I don't want to go. I'm like, all right, I hear you. I, I said, I'm, I'll, I'll let them know. I, I, I told them I just would speak to you about it. So she was like, okay. So I went back to my mother and her boyfriend and told her, you know, she said, you know, she's had enough of school, so she's not really willing to go to college. And they were just uh, <laughs> dumbfounded, like, what? Her mother's like, no, she needs to go to college. And her boyfriend was like, that's not good enough. You need to go talk with her again because she needs to go to college. I'm like, I can't make her do something she doesn't want to do. <laughs> so I left it alone at that point. I did what I said I was going to do, and I got the answer that she gave me, and I brought it back to them. At that point, it's up to them. But making me try to convince her to go to school because I was coming out of college, I understand, but it was disingenuous. So this is why it's a red pill moment. So let's rewind. <laughs> Um, four, five years prior, and, you know, I was coming out of training in the Army. I had switched to reserve so I could go to college, and I was out of training, and, you know, uh, I wanted to go to school, and my folks weren't willing to help, and both, neither my mother nor my father, biological father, and, uh, they were saying, you don't need to go to school. You're, you're too old now for you to play Joe College. Joe College is a boomer term, so no one uses that anymore. 
Um, the last time I seen Joe College was in a Peanuts comic book. That shows you how old that term is. Um, the funny thing was once I did go on to my university, it was plenty of other cats my age that was in school, probably because a lot of guys have to sometimes, you know, um, forestall going to college to take care of, you know, their financial situation because they get less help from their family than women do. And this is particularly true for black men. So, inching on to this red pill moment. So, <laughs> not only were they unwilling to help me go to school and told me I was too old to go, but then when I did go, my father was like, well, you don't need to go to a, a four-year university. You should just go to uh, an adult evening school so that you can work full-time. Like, um, whatever. I can work while I'm in school, but I don't, I'm, that's not something I want. I'm not going to turn down going to a top 50 research university in exchange to going to a, a shitty ass adult evening school just to keep a, a, a job as a cable lineman. Shout out to the cable lineman out there. Nothing against you guys. Um, it was hard work. Sometimes it was fun. Sometimes it wasn't. But the kind of grueling schedule you keep as a cable lineman would not allow you to be a, a, a regular college student. It just wouldn't. Um, in any case, so I even went back to that job to try to switch to a customer service position so I could have more flexibility with my schedule and keep it while going off to university. But they told me that wouldn't have been possible. So bon voyage. <laughs> I, uh, you know, gave them my two weeks and went on to school. And most of the people who knew me there wished me well and agreed with me <laughs> with my decision. Because, you know, if they were in the same position, they would go off to university than themselves. So what made this worse was not only were they unwilling to help, they were telling people that I was probably going to fail out of out of college. And and my father took it a step farther than that, not only saying that he that they thought I was going to fail out of college. He was actively telling people he didn't help me with college because when I was in community college, prior to going to the army that I, I failed out of community college. Completely untrue. <laughs> I was like, how do I end up tra no, what happened is I didn't finish at the community college because I transferred on to a four year school before finishing a two year degree. You don't have to finish a two year degree to transfer to a four year college. Anyway, um, fuck that boomer. But yeah, I said it. Fuck him. <laughs> so <laughs> And like you would probably say the same thing if you were in my shoes. So in any case, he was actively telling my family that he wasn't going to help me. And then they shouldn't expect much because not only was I going to fail out of college, but I had already failed out of out of a out of a, a local community college as well, which is completely untrue. I did well enough at my community college be, to go on to transfer to this good university. What was the truth is that I failed a math course a math class at that school, which I probably shouldn't have taken a math class that started on Saturday mornings at 8 a.m. as a 17, 18 year old kid. I just wasn't responsible enough to 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 do that. Um, I adjusted accordingly at the university and scheduled most of my classes around 10 a.m. or later, as most college kids do, because most of us stay up late and like going to classes late and just getting up in our sweats or pajamas and going to class. <laughs> but in any case, so yeah, they, they actively bet that I was going to fail out of school. My father lied and told people that I flunked out of community college. That's why he wasn't going to financially help me. The truth of the matter is he was having financial problems that he didn't tell me until recently, a few years ago. Matter of fact, last year, and he didn't have the wherewithal to support me going to going to college. So instead of saying that, he just told me I shouldn't be going to college and that I should just work a menial job in place of it or, you know, go back into the army um, active duty 
and forget about college, but yet he was willing to su fully support all my sisters, because all my other siblings were our girls. So all my sisters, he threw his full support at them for going to college, even if he didn't financially support them either at some points. But he never told them not to go to college. But the one black boy <laughs> in the family is told not to go to college. And so then you fast forward like five years later and this one of the same family members who said I was going to fail out of college refused to help me, my mother, and didn't even take me to school to the campus when I when I came there I actually had to get a family uh a, a cousin uh who to help me well not my cousin he's my he was my same age and wasn't currently driving his own car but his his uncle took me to camp drove me to campus and helped me move my stuff in my, my own family didn't and now so <laughs> five years later they're telling me I need to convince my sister to go to college and they're going to pay for it when they were unwilling to pay for me and unwilling to even acknowledge that I wanted to go to school much and finish and telling people I would fail. So that was my red pill moment. And that's why I avoid my family as much as possible now. Like the, the happiest I've been is when I'm in a different living space away from them. I can still deal with them when I'm in a different living space, but they're completely unbearable when I'm in the same living space with them. And that was my red pill moment, not with women particularly, but with toxic black family. And that's why I've choose to be away from them as far as possible <laughs> um, overseas or wherever I, the case may be that I can get away from them. So you may agree, you may disagree, but that was my red pill moment amongst others. And that's why I can't I can't stand being around some some black folks in the community, especially my own family. So I'm just contrarian guy, so sorry. <laughs>